Yeah. You can't just keep using the same move, man. You keep using the same move. <laughs> you know what they say, brother? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Every generation, it seems there's a revolutionary fighting game that comes out and changes the landscape forever. Street Fighter 2, Mortal Kombat, Sonic Fighters. Wait, how, how did that make the list? Street Fighter 2 was so revolutionary that it didn't seem like any game, 2D or 3D, would be able to stop it. The 3D fighting game era ushered in contenders such as the original Tekken, Virtua Fighter, and some other less than stellar entries. <coughs> But man, let me tell you, when Tekken 3 released in arcades and later on the PlayStation, it was like a bomb hit the industry and created shockwaves that we still feel to this day. It came out in arcades in 1997 and released for the PlayStation in 1998, which saved a lot of quarters in exchange for a lot of dollars. In Japan, the April 1997 issues of Game Machine listed Tekken 3 as the most successful arcade game of the year. The ratings from US game magazines went crazy too, especially after the console release. GamePro gave it a 4.5 out of 5. It was the first game in three years to receive a 10 from Electronic Gaming Monthly. If we go forward in time to 2011, Complex ranked it as the fourth best fighting game of all time. In 2009, it was on Game Informer's top 200 games of all time list. I mean, at, at this point, you get it, right? It was, it was a good game. But the question quickly becomes, why was it so good? What made it different than the other droves of fighting games that came before it? Well, first of all, in the fighting game, the controls better be A1. See, the original Street Fighter's problem was... Wait, there was a Street Fighter 1? The controls were kind of finicky. You couldn't always do the move you wanted to do, like Haruken, because it seemed to choose that moment at will. Of course, its sequel fixed that, but in the transition to 3D, those mechanics had to be worked with too. Tekken 3 just felt right. The punches and kicks had oomph and the combos could be repeated with precision over and over again. Okay, cool, you can kick on time, but what else? Bro, the stages were epic themselves. Unique environments with interesting backgrounds tied into the lore of each character. You've got the carnival stage with the merry-go-round, home to Ling Xiaoyu, which is cool, but not quite as dope as King Skyring that hangs over the top of the mountains in Mexico. Jin's Tiger Dojo had this sense of youthful rebellion. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not my grandpa, but I'll still kick your ass. My personal favorite might be the Aztec temple entrance where you fight Heiachi. In hindsight, yeah, they didn't have a bunch of moving characters in the back like in 2D fighting games, but each one had its own sense of beauty. However, we all know why we're here, why Tekken will always have the special place in our hearts. The characters, the lineup was crazy. 23 characters, each with their own unique moveset or look. Lei Wulong, who was in the original Tekken with his Jackie Chan inspired hair and costume. We all knew that was Jackie Chan, don't even try to lie, and we would always put him up against Law, who was the Bruce Lee clone. Law was my boy too. I used to hit that backflip kick all the time just because it looked so cool. I mean, so, so, so what if you blocked it? I'm gonna do it again. All right, Huarong and his Taekwondo were my number one goes to. He had such easy combos. And then you got this man right here, Lenny Kravitz, uh, Eddie Gordo, with his capoeira dance martial arts. Eddie, I I'm sorry, but if I see you do a handstand in the middle of a fight, I'm walking away. Why would I mess with anyone that was willing to do that? I'm sorry. Nina Williams would always kick my ass in arcade mode. I don't know why, but it was probably them sharp ass heels. And remember when you unlock stuff in a game rather than pay $9.99 for a micro? transaction i mean I, I remember i didn't have a memory card but i didn't turn off my playstation for a week since i unlocked all of the characters it was so much more satisfying and let's talk about the outro scenes after you beat the arcade mode with each character seven year old me didn't know what the hell was going on with the story but the graphics looked impossibly real back then it was cool to see the aftermath of all of their stories speaking of story did y'all know the actual story that was going on in the game? This takes place 20 years after Tekken 2. So Heihachi, this grandpa, had a military squad called the Tekken Force that discovered Ogre, this green bean, while on an excavation in Mexico. Ogre wiped out Heihachi's whole squad except for one dude who relayed what happened to him. Heihachi's like, oh word, let me go find him real quick so I can shoot this spade and then use his power to take over the world. Ogre then goes and finds Heihachi's daughter-in-law, June Kazama, who was in Tekken 2, and also the mother of our boy, Jin. 
Jen. Ogre attacks her and Jen, knocking Jen unconscious and presumably killing Jun. Jen escapes, tells his grandpa Heihachi, and Heihachi trains him. Okay, there's a lot of names so far, but, but I'm with you. Four years later, the King of Iron Fist Tournament 3, so Tekken 3 basically, starts, and Heihachi is really using it as a bait to lure Ogre. Jen beats everybody's ass and then fights Ogre, killing him also. For some reason, though, Grandpa Heihachi wasn't cool with that because it messed up his world domination plan. So he goes to kill Jin, his own grandson, and puts a cap right in his forehead. But Jin turns into this demon and revives himself, beats up Heihachi and his troops, then flies away. What? Man, I hope y'all enjoyed this breakdown as much as I love bringing it to you. And leave a comment below if you have any Tekken 3 memories of your own. And make sure you like and subscribe to Gaming While Black for more of these videos and for the culture, man. All right, I'm going to get back to playing, so peace out.